Question 1 and the mark scheme can be broken into five tasks. They are import random, declaration and initialization of a variable, declaration and initialization of a constant, assign the result of a library call to a variable, display a message and the content of a variable on screen. In this table, we have provided signposting to where you can find out more about each of these tasks from our currently available resources and materials. This is the original question from the GCSE 2020 Computer Science Specimen Assessment Material. This type of question simulates the development process that students will have encountered during their class lessons. There are syntax, runtime or logic errors that need to be fixed to create a functional solution to a problem. There are improvements needed to the code to make it more maintainable. Students are provided with bullet point comments indicating the amendments that need to be made to the code. In this question, the inputs as well as the anticipated outputs are described. This is, in effect, the test data for the code. Students can use it to make judgments about the completeness of the code they produce. This is the file that the students are given during the exam. Students are provided with additional comments in the code to remind them of the tasks that they need to address. For ease and speed, we will provide a summary of how marks were awarded for response A shown on screen. For a more detailed explanation of how marks were awarded, including additional information that would support an improved response, you should open up the mark explanation document that is part of this download pack. In summary, the marks for this particular response were awarded as follows. Line 7. No marks for importing a random library. Line 14. Two marks for creating a variable, roll, and setting it to zero. Line 18. One mark for setting a constant to six, but no mark for naming that constant. Line 24, no marks for assignment as an equality operator is used. Line 28, two marks for the correct message and variable value printed. The total mark is five. You or your students may wish to annotate this example with the accredited points and then look at how they might improve them to score a higher mark. For response B, marks were awarded as follows. Line 6, no marks for importing a random library. Line 13, one mark for creating a variable, roll, but it's not set correctly. Line 16, <coughs> one mark for setting a constant to 6, but name is not correct. 
line 23. One mark for assignment of a library call. Line 27. No marks for displaying a correct message. The total marks are three. Again, review the mark explanation document for additional explanation, including how this candidate could have improved their response. You might want to consider in what ways this response was different to the first. And again, how you might improve this response to achieve higher marks. This type of question requires students to follow a set of instructions in order to produce a working solution to a simple program. They don't have to understand what the code does. As long as they follow the instructions correctly, and write the lines of codes required, they will earn the marks. In setting this type of question, it is easiest to develop it in reverse order, i.e. write the solution yourself following the conventions from the programming language subset before writing the question. Then decide which parts of the solution will make up the mark scheme. Next, add scaffolded instructions in the code to guide students through construction of the solution. And finally, remove the parts required in the response. Bear in mind the student should be able to complete the task in 10 minutes. In the question text itself, provide only the information that students need to accomplish the task. State each requirement using a verb. If possible, state each requirement from a positive perspective, avoiding negation. You can use this flowchart as a step-by-step -step guide to support both the creation of this type of question and also the decision making behind it, thereby creating an accessible and challenging question for your students to complete.